Good day ladies and gents, it's Simon Brown here. Today we're doing a short and sharp and we're looking at the balance sheet. Balance sheet is a summary of the financial balances. I suppose that makes sense. Only we delve into it. It's the statement of assets and liabilities. It's for a particular point in time. gets published twice a year with listed companies, interim results and year-end results. And it really is a snapshot of a particular point in time. What's very important is assets and liabilities. Assets are, in essence, things that earn you money. They're the good things in your, in your company. Liabilities are the things that are going to cost you money. I suppose, in a sense, they're the bad things. Now, we need both sides of an equation for a company to be a viable going concern. And those assets are going to generate revenue. They're what's making the money. And the liabilities is where the money is flowing out of the business. Those obligations that you have. If your assets are larger than your liabilities, you add them up, you get to a value for the assets, you get to a value for the liabilities. If the assets are larger, the company is a going concern. In other words, if you took this company and shut it down and sold all the assets and took that money and used it to pay all the liabilities, if there's money left over, you're a going concern. And what we call with that money left over is shareholder equity. A balance sheet needs to balance. Your assets and liabilities don't balance, so if assets are larger than liabilities, we add that equity to the liability side, and then we have a balancing balance sheet. If your assets are less than your liabilities, you sold all the assets and you paid all the debts, and you still had debts left over, the company is technically bankrupt. There is negative shareholder equity. So equity is your assets less your liabilities. In essence, it's that breakup value of the company. Your net asset value, your shareholder value. So when you have a company, it's going to trade well above the equity level because that's what the company is worth if you broke it into pieces, and sold all the assets, paid all the liabilities. That's what it's worth. But obviously that equity, that rump of the company, generates profit. When you buy a share in the market, what you're really doing is buying those future profits. You've got broadly two types of assets and liabilities, your current assets and liabilities. Those are those which can be or will be converted into cash in the next 12 months, in the case of assets, or need to be paid in the next 12 months. In other words, there's a cash flow associated with them within this financial year. It will be short-term in nature because it's 12 months, and it will be, for example, an overdraft. That needs to be paid within the next year. Trade and other receivables. And that will sit on potentially both sides. In the one sense, you've received goods but haven't yet paid for it. That would be a liability, but you're going to pay for it within the next year. On the other side, you have delivered goods, but you haven't yet received the money. That sits in the balance sheet, but you expect that money fairly soon. Of course, cash sits uh, as a current uh, inventories. The stock that you hold within the company that you obviously plan to sell. You don't have stock that you're only going to sell more than a year's time. These are the quickly liquidated or need to be paid. And what you're really looking for is, particularly in terms of the current liabilities, is can the company cover them? Do they have sufficient reserves, sufficient cash, or if they don't, can they raise debt to cover it? Your non-current assets and liabilities are those for which there is no cash flow within the next 12 months. They are your longer-term assets and liabilities. So that would be long-term structured debt. Sure, there's an interest payment that you need to make every so often, but the repayment of the debt in totality is a year or three, five, maybe even ten years down the line. In other words, that debt repayment is not this year's problem. Obviously, your intangibles... They sit on the asset side of the balance sheet. That would be, for example, your goodwill. And they're not going to realize any cash flow within the next year. Property, plant, equipment, those tools that you use to make the profits, to make the widgets, whatever it is that you do in the business. Again, you're unlikely to be selling those in the next year. So they are non-current. Quick look at a balance sheet. So on the asset side, we'd have cash, inventories, your hold for sales, your receivables. Receivables are you've delivered the service but the money hasn't been paid. Your assets in this case add up to 13.5 million. On your liability side, you've got short and long-term debt. You've got your payables. You've received the good but you haven't yet paid for it. 
You got provisions. Provisions is money you set aside for a rainy day. Maybe you've got a competition commission outstanding. There might be a fine or some other legal case. It's probably going to be a current, in other words, due within the next 12 months, and the company has put that money aside in order to pay that expected fine, legal bill, whatever it may be. And then you've got the equity. You would note that the liabilities and the assets both equal 13.5 million. But the liabilities actually come in at 9.5 million, and then we put that 4 million rand equity. That is the shareholder value. If we were to liquidate this company, take, turn all the assets into cash, and then pay all the liabilities, we would be left with 4 million rand. That is your equity. You then, of course, do a lot of formulas on equity. You get debt to equity ratios. You get return on equity. What's very important here is on the asset side, can we realize that cash? Now, for the cash, 2.5 million is easy. But would we get 4 million for the, for the inventories, the receivables, the hold for sale? If there was perhaps some goodwill there or intangibles, could we realize the value? So take a bit of a jaundiced eye to that asset side, interrogate it, make sure it makes sense. Make sure that you really agree and perhaps you want to knock some of it off. You say, well, inventories, the company goes bust and we've got a bit of a fire sale, we're only going to get 5 million. That takes a million off the assets, which takes a million off your equity. So it's inventories, can they be sold at current values? What about those intangibles? particularly that goodwill. What is goodwill? Goodwill is when you buy a company, maybe for 10 million, but the equity value is only 4 million. You paid 6 million goodwill. Why did you pay it? Well, you paid it because you work on the theory that that goodwill would generate the profit for you. But it then goes as into the balance sheet as an asset. What if you're overpaid? You need to write that down. And goodwill is often hard to sell. It. Things such as brand value, it is, by the definition of its name, intangible. Intangibles are often hard to sell. Short-term debt, current debt, you need to see, look at, make sure that they can pay it off. I never like companies that have got large overdrafts, particularly if it goes from year to year. Why don't they formalize that debt, make it more structured? And what is their long-term debt? The long-term debt might only be next year or three year away problem, but can they service it? Can they pay it back? Of course, they could roll it into further debt. The trick there is times change. Sometimes it's easy to borrow money, sometimes it's a whole lot harder. And what you want to look at is that equity number. Chart it, look at it. Is it declining or increasing? Is there a steady trend in one direction or the other? Is that trend positive, i.e. increasing? And then as I said, you've got your formulas such as return on equity, debt to equity and others.